practical approach to your goals using OKRs. Today, it's about showing you the ways of focusing your work, of making sure that you achieve the greatness and everything you need to achieve your product. This session will be divided into five parts. We'll start with the product vision, which is essential in determining what goals should you set. I will tell you about being data-driven and how it is important for product managers in order to be focused and achieve success, which will lead us to, thra- to slightly philosophical um, segment on strategical thinking. Then we'll move to goals and finally to OKRs. So without further ado, let's begin. The vision and not the Marvel Cinematic Universe superhero vision, but the product vision. What is it? Well, to make it short, it's a simple sentence that tells you what you want to achieve with the product. The vision should incorporate your target audience, the way you want to achieve your product success, what problem are you solving, and, well, few other tidbits. But that's not really important in terms of the fine detail. It's important to know that this is your North Star, that you declare what you want to achieve, and based on that, you can have different interpretations on how to do it. To illustrate what I mean, Let's look at my fake product called Money Hungry Alarm Clock. Money Hungry Alarm Clock is a mobile app that basically forces you to pay the app if you use the snooze button. That's that's a very simple context, uh, and I uh, no, not context um, context. That's a simple idea, and uh, obviously. Maybe such product exists. I don't intend to build it, but it always helps me to illustrate different aspects of product management. So for this particular app, the vision goes something like this. We want to enable our clients to reach their work on time by providing them the technology to achieve that. Now, obviously, the idea here is to build a mobile app that takes money from your account if you use the snooze button. But see how I focus on the problem, on what is the app solving, and I'm saying that I just want to use the tech to to achieve that. That means that I'm focused on achieving a result and not means on which I want to do that. With this, it means that I can either build my app and just go with the original premise, but also if I decide a different approach and see if playing uh, ads on full loudness when the snooze button is pressed is more effective, maybe it brings me more revenue and is more successful in uh, maintaining the client base or even waking them up, who knows? But it still meets the vision. It still meets the problem that needs solving. So, why set a vision? Why do you need a simple sentence like that in order to progress with your product? First of all, it helps you focus your efforts. It tells you where to go and what you want to achieve. Just like we said with the example already presented. It defines your target, so everyone is aware of what you are actually want to achieve. It prevents you from so, from happening called feature creep, where you just develop feature for feature's sake, which don't really make too much uh, sense. They uh, complicate the product, and whenever you have an option to do something, you can ask yourself, does it make sense? Does it 
meet the vision. And trust me, the vision will appear on its own anyway. But the vision that will appear on its own might not be the one you'd like to have, which will be discouraging, like we are the cheaper version of the leading competitor. And this this is not what gives you um, inspiration that helps you to get better. Not at all. It, It just makes you sad. So it's best to have a vision that you control, that helps you develop the product, rather than having a vision that jeopardizes your hard work. But <laughs> well, worst case scenario, it just highlights your professionalism. Product managers develop visions, full stop. If you still don't believe in it, if you still think it's a waste of your time, it's still something you should do in order to show that you are a great product manager. Let's understand the more numeric aspect. Because when you start your journey to a vision, and vision is your destination, then you have to know your progress. Then you have to know how are you getting better, if you're getting better. And that is being data-driven. This is one of those features that is highly demanded from product managers. It's almost on every job ad, and it's something that you need to represent, being a great PM. What does it mean? This is an art of pursuing evidence. This is realizing that everything that has no evidence and has no numbers is just an opinion. That you don't just make claims without justification that you pursue data, that's evidence, you create frameworks that will generate the evidence, and you will you are able to well numerically present anything you do. That also means that if you can put a number on something, you can report on it. You can see the progress, you can present it to stakeholders, And with this, if you can put a number of everything, you can limit risk. You can see what's your best possible decision in any given circumstance. And, well, don't make foolish mistakes based on gut feeling. Of course, there will be stuff that can be done on gut feeling. It's not that we are computers, but... If you have a lot of uh, stakes, you need to do something in several sprints and invest dozens or hundreds of dollars, then, well, you need your data to prove that this is a good direction. It's almost like playing poker, right? You can uh, playfully go into a hand that has a low stake game, but if there's an all-in on the table, you better think twice. Other than that, it resolves conflicts. If there are people with different opinions, then, well, data is there to show the truth. It's there to make sure that, well, opinions do not um, create your product and shape it. It's educated moves a very well-crafted decisions that can be supported by great evidence to everyone that is open to be to hear <laughs> that evidence. That also medicates dealing with hippos. That's an acronym for highest pers- highest paid person's opinion. Sometimes you will have managers that will just come into your room and give you a magical solution, a thing that you should just do and it will be great. Nah, they have just opinions, like anyone. And unless they can support it with data, then you probably shouldn't follow that opinion. There can be an illusion that this is a good thing to do. 
those people have a lot of experience. They are paid highly to have those opinions. But it's up to you to come up with evidence or demand evidence in order to change that particular opinion into a decision. As I said, being data-driven is a feature pursued by many companies that um, demand that when hiring a PM. And thus, if you can show that you successfully conduct A-B tests, that you look for evidence when making your product backlog decisions, that you can quantify the value impact on the product, then you are more likely to be the winning candidate. So if you're data-driven, you also have to have a feature that I call strategic thinking. There is a temptation for product managers to be project managers, to in big, um, with big effort, to focus on making sure that the next sprint is ready, that the story is polished, and be right here, right now, dealing with all the fires, all the problems, and just living day in, day out. That's not product management. That's as I said, project management. You have to step up. You have to be the person that looks into the future and plans ahead, that has a file on many or every possible scenario, that knows how to react if something bad happens and is ready to support his or her company when the product he she leads needs to be uh, put to maintenance mode or simply closed. With this, if you are able to demonstrate strategic thinking, your team and stakeholders will trust you greatly and will feel inspired by everything you do, by all the ideas that you present. You will be ready for the less expected challenges by say, observing the market and seeing issues affecting similar companies, you can plan ahead on what happens if the same problem strikes you. What do you do when the, when the problem appears? And, you well, you just take out a file with brainstorming ideas or user stories and tasks that are prepared for the scenarios, and everyone will be amazed. Maybe you will just invest ahead to prevent this issue, it might not look too good there and then, but when the problem arises, you will be already there with a solution. That's, that's really, really amazing. That will secure your company's future. That will save jobs. That will save the profit. Just because you took an extra time to figure out what happens if. What if everyone stops using Skype and switches to Zoom? What do we do then? Well, I might have a solution, I might have an idea, but anyway. That strategic thinking is also about demonstrating that you understand your clients, your market and your product to an absolutely highest degree. That you are an expert in your field and you can make very educational guesses. Like Stanislav Lem or Star Trek did about the future, where devices that are now our day-to-day equipments have been theorized much ahead and many futurists correctly um, guessed how the technology will evolve. They understood the needs of the users of technology and guessed that technology will adapt to the users, not the other way around. Okay, so now we've built all the foundations that helps you to be a data-driven, strategic product manager that can set his or her own goals 
in order to achieve the vision. So, again, not the Marvel Cinematic Universe vision. Why set goals? Uh, you probably already know the answer. That's very in line with what I said about strategic thinking, about being data-driven. But still, let's dwell on that. Let's figure out the goals. If you are in a situation where the product simply grows, then you might have said, let's just chill out and let it grow, let it grow. We don't need to do too, more, too much. But still, if you have ambitious goals, you will think out of the box. You will be pushed to do more, to figure out more, to try something that might be slightly risky and wouldn't uh, be too smart if you just do it. Uh, in a situation where the growth simply appears. But yeah, that's thinking out of the box and being creative is a great thing for PMs and goals really help with it. It helps you to focus. Just like the vision helps you to focus your development efforts, the goals help you to develop the specific aspect you deemed the most important. So you need to realize that you can't do everything. You can't fix all the issues. You can't win all the clients. Instead, you need to focus on the battles that you are most likely to win or win big. And goals really help with that. And to add here, you want to reach those goals in specific time. So it's helping you to make promises to stakeholders and stick to them and landing them when you promised to land them. And that is a communication framework that you set expectations and then you want to meet those expectations. You feel the pressure of your promises that will help you to deliver the results. Obviously, this is not bulletproof. Just by setting goals doesn't mean that you will achieve them. But if you are setting goals, then you know that this can be somehow done. You're not telling everyone just, let's make a goal to have everyone use Skype full stop. No, that's, that's unreasonable. That's not physically possible. Not even everyone has a device to support Skype, right? And we know the situation in the market. We know that there is big competition. We need to just make sure that we create a product that when shown to someone, they will appreciate it. They want to use it and stick to it. And that creates the goals that are in line with that plan. So, Let's talk about making good goals, smart goals. I'm not a big fan of frameworks. I'm usually seeing them as, as trying to be needlessly smart just by putting something that's well obvious when you think about it and giving it a, it a cool name and putting few um, common sense guidelines and call it a framework. But this one, this one, called the Smart Goal Framework, I really like. It tells you what goals need to be successful and helpful. They need to be specific, so simple, sen sensible, significant for your product. So, say, for Skype to grow the number of users who use the video calls. Measurable, meaningful, motivating. That means that, well, I know how many people use Skype for video calls, and I'm setting myself a bar that will that I will want to reach, that I want to grow the number of users. Achievable. Agreed, attainable, yeah, very similar to, to measurable. And relevant, reasonable, realistic, resourced, results driven. Everything I think I already said. But the most important part is the time bound part. If you don't put a deadline on your goals, then it feels like there's no 
pressure to achieve them, that you'll just work and work and work until the goal is achieved. No. You need the pressure. It's like when you're studying to, for an exam. You need to be ready with your uh, knowledge by the exam state. Otherwise, the effort doesn't make any sense, right? You have to work hard in order to achieve goal by a certain day. You need to be able to track progress and make sense that and make sure that it makes sense in the whole scope that you are learning the right stuff, you are developing the right product aspects, which slowly leads me finally to OKRs. And but for that, three types of goals: feature, KPI, and OKR based. Feature based, worst goals ever. You have no. Um, sorry, you have no freedom. You just do stuff that you think that should be added to the product. You have no flexibility. You have to keep the promises. And if there's an opportunity, then it stands uh, directly um, in opposition to your goals, making it awkward and difficult. And you don't want to do that. KPI goals are more sensible. KPI stands for Key Performer Index like the number of people using the video calls in Skype. Those are much better, but a step up from that is OKR-based goals. Objective key results. If we go to the vision, it's our destination. To reach our destination, we have to have a strategy. And strategic items can have specific aspects of it, specific Mm, milestones we want to achieve in order to clear a part of strategy. Those will be your OKRs. They give you direction on what to do and what to achieve, but give you freedom to do that, to, to decide on what's the best means of achieving the goal. This will often be a KPI, a number that you can put, it can be a binary achieved or not, but it can be also a set of KPIs that will help you to go towards an OKR and finish it, the land it for the goal of increasing the number using people, for the goal of um, getting as many people reaching an, uh, for the goal of getting as many people using video calls in Skype as possible. You can do that by getting new people to your Skype. You can fix a known issue to prevent people from not using the video calls. You can make sure that people who already use it don't leave, thus making any additional growth more meaningful. There's lots of aspects that you can break a single OKR into and figure out what makes the most sense? What's the most valuable thing you can do to achieve that OKR goal? Again, objective key result. It's easy to understand, easy to communicate. And funny enough, they can even be achieved without development. Maybe it's all about talking to the right people, getting that marketing budget. Maybe you have the most excellent software giving video calls on the planet. All you need is to someone to invest in a YouTube campaign. That's, that's also the way of achieving that KPI of having more people to use um, video calls. And now I realize I'm saying more because I don't want to put a number on it as it's not really public and I don't want to spit it out um, by accident. So let's say just that we want to achieve the X, X number of people having video calls on Skype. So yeah, we had a long intro to a quite short segment because, well, OKRs are just the um, very easy to understand. Uh, that simple and common sense approach to achieving the goals, to be to allow you to be the product manager that looks for opportunities and values in different places, in different ways, and it's okay to take some risk risks along the way. So before we close, let's look at 
two examples. Well, I used an example um, all over this webinar, but let's say that let's look at additional two examples, like um, increase the number of people who complete the account registration. This goal is to be achieved by Q2. We want to have 60%. And currently we are seeing that only 30% who start the registration finished them finish it. Again, this is, those are fake numbers, nothing to do with Skype, I, and the uh, Skype numbers are quite better. But um, yeah, again, here you can either revamp the registration process, make it shorter, uh, make it appear in different places where it makes more sense, maybe in embed a new tag that will allow you to simplify this process by using a Gmail login, for example, or you fix the issues that you know that are on the registration process and voila, you've hit your goal. A second example would be to maximize products uptime. And this is like something that may appear if you have a very quickly developed product that's a startup that you just focused on having it working, selling it, having clients, and suddenly you have way too many support tickets that the product is not working when it should. So what you do is you set the goal of the uptime to 99.9999%, but you don't know your uptime to begin with. So a part of this OKR will be to, well, measure the uptime first and foremost. So. Yeah, that's something we want to achieve by Q4. Not, and we as hypothetical company in this example, not Skype. And well, Skype is better. But that's all I have for you. If you know me, you know that I leave no leave unturned in, when it comes to questions coming my way. So please connect to me on LinkedIn and ask your question. Uh, I'll definitely answer it to the best of my ability. You can also email me on dr.bartosz.jaworski.gmail.com. It's on the screen. Well, Polish uh, is not the most um, compatible uh, with English language. However, let's focus on quickly on if you want to learn more from me and you like this webinar and you want to become a great product manager, on the screen, there are links to multiple ways I share the product management knowledge. I have a Udemy course that's best rated at the time of the recording. I post very um, helpful articles on Medium and LinkedIn for you guys to follow and, well, get better. I post free product management classes weekly on my YouTube channel and also almost daily um, product management resources on Twitter so that you can become better with, well, the work I share. So that's all from me now. I hope that this path to understanding what OKRs are, what you need to know and who you need to be as a PM, um, need to be reached before creating good OKRs and following them. And well, become great product managers, create great products and measure them, set ambitious goals, achieve them. And um, I wish you all a very good day and very good sessions throughout the rest of the conference. Thank you. I hope to hear from you soon. Bye-bye.